I guess it's 215 years that we've been uh, at it, and uh, I think in the history of the medical school, the one thing that is uh, constant, um, evergreen, if you will, is the presence of outstanding educators. And uh, from the time of Nathan Smith to the recent naming of the medical school, um, you know, the educators here really form the backbone of the school. You know, I've, I've read um, about the founding of the medical school, and, and Nathan Smith, in the, uh, uh, when he founded the school in 1797, would, would go on horseback all over New Hampshire and Vermont seeing patients, and he'd take students with him. Um, and was really recognized at that period of time as the premier medical educator uh, in, in the country. So we want to preserve that, um, that tradition. So um, I'm really excited that tonight, in a few minutes, for the first time in the history of the school, we're going to uh, establish an academy of master faculty educators. Um, this, was a, this was a difficult process because there are so many people who who we should, who, who could be recognized. But uh, after talking to many people and inviting nominations, and uh, we've come up with 16. There will be more next year, and there will be more the year after that. But these people, and I, I don't think you'll be surprised, they represent the pinnacle of teaching excellence. They embody the very best of the Geisel School of Medicine. And, uh, and you know, their peers recognize that. So um, what, uh, the way we're going to do this is, um, and I hope for most of you it's a surprise. We tried to keep it a surprise. If there's one thing I've learned is not everybody keeps surprises. But <laughs> I, 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 I asked each of, the, each of the honorees to identify a student or a, someone they have worked with that was particularly special for them. And that individual is going to introduce them. And uh, I, if my math is correct, all 16 of them are here. And that's a miracle, given that people travel and, and so on and so forth. So um, what I'd like to say to the people in the front row who will do the introducing, I'm going to sit down. Uh, I don't need to come up 16 times. Please keep your comments to a minute. Introduce yourself. Talk about your, your master educator. Uh, and the master educator, uh, after your name is called, if you would come forward and have a seat up there. We don't have time for you to talk. <laughs> we, we did that math, and we would be here till tomorrow. Um, um, so um, uh, let's get started. and. Uh, as soon as one student is, is finished, you can sit down, and then the next one comes up, and we'll just keep doing it. So, Molly, we're going to start with you. Good evening. Um, although this is the Academy of Master Faculty Educators, this particular individual additionally truly embraces the role of mentor. A long-standing member of what is really the foundation of this medical school, he has touched so many students. He is the revered head of the incomparable Smith Society, which is how I first came in contact with him, but it was during a first-year elective that I really came to know what a special teacher he was. Mindfulness in Medicine was the title, and as it combined two of my favorite things, I was thrilled to see it on the roster. The material was interesting, but I think the most valuable thing I took from that elective was a role model. I saw someone whose ability to connect with his students and his patients was unparalleled. And after a number of likely overly enthusiastic emails, I actually had the privilege of co-teaching the elective with him during my third and fourth years. I don't think I expressed this enough to him at the time, but teaching alongside him was one of my greatest honors in medical school. He is a cornerstone of this school and a real gift to its students. And with his legendary final lecture, he has likely turned a disproportionate number of them into cardiologists. So please join me in honoring Dr. Jim Bell. Okay. 
Hi everyone, I am truly honored to have the opportunity to introduce such an incredible mentor and teacher. He arrived at Dartmouth in 1993 and has been involved in medical and graduate education since then. He's participated and served as core course director for several years for both biomedical and genetics basis of medicine course taken by the first year med students, as well as first year as a part of first year MCB core course. In 2004, he was awarded the Distinguished Lecturer Award by the first year medical students, also winning the Graduate Faculty Mentoring Award in 2007. So far, he's graduated 12 PhD students from his lab and will hopefully be adding more to that list soon. Um, throughout my years in his lab, I've come to realize that he has an incredible way of tailoring his teaching techniques to each individual. He learns from our strengths and weaknesses and uses that to teach us individually. Um, which not only makes him an incredible teacher, but also, uh, but also gives each student a unique view on how great he is. He's taught some of us how to do cesium chloride preps and western blots, and others just how to have more confidence in themselves. He's listened to us sometimes practice our talks for hours on end until we finally feel ready. He's helped us build new roads when we think our projects are completely at a dead end. For me, it's the fact that no matter how early I am in lab, I know he's always there with his door open, waiting to hear what I have to say, whether it's talking about science, data, or just something I need help with. He's taught me the value of a great experiment and that patience isn't just a virtue. It's actually a necessity, especially in science. He's taught me, and although there's, he's taught us all in different ways, he's taught us to be better scientists and better individuals. So please join me in honoring Dr. Dwayne Compton. I'm Molly, by the way, I forgot the first time. So I came back again. <laughs> so I'm also very honored to have been asked to introduce one of the most special educators we have here at Geisel. It's so rare and wonderful to come across a teacher with an obvious passion, commitment, and expertise in both the fields of medicine and education. Any student who has had the privilege of working with her instantly feels cared about and invested in, which is truly a gift in a world where you are often mistaken for some inanimate room decor. She inspires and is respected by all who are fortunate enough to work with her, including myself. I was recently at a conference with her where she humbly accepted a major award for her work in creating online learning modules, which are now almost uniformly used in U.S. medical schools. We were in a seminar together and started talking about the neuropsychology of information processing, really, um, and ran out of time mid-conversation. She said we should finish this conversation, which I sort of interpreted as just a polite way to say I don't want to be late for the keynote address. But almost as soon as I landed in Boston, I found myself sitting in a restaurant with her, and we really finished the conversation. This is the sort of unsolicited commitment and genuine enthusiasm that she brings as a teacher, colleague, and mentor. I'm just one of the many students who's been truly inspired by her, and so it is my great pleasure to help honor Dr. Leslie Fall. My name is Brian Piper. I'm honored to have been asked to introduce also another wonderful educator and mentor. When I first arrived at this school just shy of a year ago, I was immediately impressed with this faculty member's special gift to teach for understanding. Apparently, I wasn't the only one that recognized it either, because it seemed as if at every lecture there was a sold out crowd. Um, students realized that they weren't being talked at or talk to, but truly taught. She epitomizes masterful teaching. As time went on, my peers and I realized that this faculty member is not only a master teacher, but she has a gift for giving sound and trusted advice and great encouragement. Now, one time in my young medical career, I was a little bit down and out, and it was the winter time, and I took a uh, a set of exams and I was incredibly distracted. In fact, I'd already set up an appointment to talk about possibly uh, deferring enrollment for a time to, uh, to consider other options. And I, uh, I did quite poorly on these exams for anybody's standards, and, uh, and especially mine. 
And I came into class the next day, and I walked past this faculty member, and, and there was a very distinct look at me. And, uh, and I looked at her, and I said, you saw my grades, didn't you? And she smiled and said, yeah, do we need to talk? Uh, and we did. And, uh, and she snapped me back quickly uh, to where I needed to be. Uh, she gives great advice. Her name is often heard in the hallways and classrooms around campus as a figure to whom students look for direction and support. She has become a champion for her students and has lifted the bar for the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth. Please join me in honoring Dr. Virginia Lyons. I'm Amy Thomas, I'm third year here at Dartmouth, and uh, have been blessed to have worked with uh, the person that I'm going to be um, talking about um, across the three years of being here. Uh, the first two in the classroom and the third he probably doesn't know about, but I was uh, lucky enough to be able to see a, a few of his write-ups about patients while I was out in family medicine and uh, really enjoyed his wisdom in uh, guiding me with uh, handling those patients. Um, in the first year, my first memory of this person was um, of going to the hospital and being able to see him um, give a special uh, lecture. And I remember being so excited because um, he was teaching um, a physiology concept that I just hadn't gotten at all and had tried to read chapters and tried to go through my notes and all of a sudden a light bulb went off when I had him and I went up to him afterwards um, and said, where have you been all this time? You know, you finally made this make sense to me. Why aren't you, you know, in more of my classes? And he said, well, I'm glad it made sense. Just wait till second year, you'll see a lot of me. And uh, he was absolutely right. He led all of the pulmonology lectures, um, or a vast majority of them in second year. And uh, I was also blessed to be in a small group and felt like I'd won the lottery and being able to be one of the students that got him both in class and outside of class. Um, so I'm honored to be able to um, be here to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Manning into the academy. Thank you. I'm Eddie Rulin, a fourth year uh, MD, MBA student. And I too am honored to introduce a, a truly great teacher. And I'm excited for this new uh, master educator. Uh, he, this professor has a long track record in great teaching. Not only did I attend his lectures in the first two years, but just a few short years ago, my father attended the first two years under this professor. He's a teacher I've gotten to know inside and outside the classroom. And through this, I've seen that he truly cares about students and getting to know them outside the classroom. He embodies what makes Dartmouth special and why I chose to come to this great institution. I believe that nominating him will continue to bring a future of great students to this university as well. Please join me in honoring Dr. Jean Natty. My name is Carolyn Cloris, and I'm a third year medical student. I'll be introducing one of the first physicians that my class met when we came to Dartmouth, and it turns out one of our most dedicated educators, although we didn't, didn't know that about him yet. I had the opportunity to get to know this physician as a lecturer, a PBL tutor, and on, as a leader in the medical education committee, where we not infrequently disagreed, but he was always happy to, to hear my opinion and those of other students, which we really appreciate. I was actually pretty intimidated to find out that he was my PBL tutor as he wrote most of the cases, 
But uh, on our first day, or, or maybe our second session, he brought out his Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. It really loosened us up. By the end of the month, we were all acting out the cases, and PBL turned out to be one of the best parts of Dartmouth for me. So uh, please join me in recognizing this educator for his dedication and also his sense of humor. It's Dave Nurnberg. It is a tremendous opportunity uh, to, uh, in, in, an honor and a uh, privilege to speak about this master educator. Um, he is a tremendous role model, an inspiring teacher, a caring mentor, and someone who, I'm, who I consider to be the treasure of Kaizel. Joe's, excuse me, <laughs> Joe's humanistic focus has forever changed my relationship to medical training and practice. Through his words and actions, he has helped me transform challenging moments of medical school into opportunities for growth and learning. He has counseled me through personal and professional challenges that I have faced. In addition to these important moments requiring his advice and wisdom, Joe asked me about my daily life too. He is one of the most genuine, honest, wise, and trustworthy people I have ever had the privilege to know. He is well known for his heavy sprinkling of inspirational Quotes emphasize his points. There's one quote he related from the philosopher scientist Albert Schweitzer that has stuck with me. Uh, it sums up, I think, the gospel of Joe. Grow into your ideals so that life can never rob you of them. He has done so and makes us believe that we too may be so lucky. Joe is a major reason why the school is what it is, a thriving and mutually supportive community. Be it in his office, one-on-one, -on -one, in the classroom, during a lecture or discussion, or in his weekly community-wide emails, he creates an open, caring space in which to speak freely about challenges, but also to share joys and accomplishments. He creates a sense of shared responsibility to each other. So Joe is a major reason why medical school education has been positive, exciting, and inspiring. Time and again, he's helped me find ways to rediscover the satisfaction and meaning of medical training when it was obscured by stress or pressure. While the curriculum and the knowledge required to be a physician may be dictated by years of science and clinical practice, the hidden curriculum is much more flexible and is shaped in large part by the attitudes and ideals of those within the learning community. Joe's greatest impact has been on molding the hidden curriculum into one that allows students to grow into their ideals so that nobody can ever rob them of them. Congratulations. I'm Ed Marins. I'm a class of Geisel class of 1994. Back then, we called it Dartmouth Medical School. I'm proud to be part of Geisel now, um, and it's really an honor to be here. Um, unlike my uh, presentees that preceded me, I've been here for a little bit longer, and and uh, this is truly an honor to come back at, at, at this event. Um, I also feel like I'm a current student. I'm in the Master's in Healthcare Delivery Science course, so I get the student discount when I go to places in town, which is. <laughs> Really nice, um, and I'm, I'm pleased to announce this uh, master clinician and someone I've known for two decades. Um, I've known this person as a student. I've known them as a, in the classroom, in the hospital. I've known them uh, as my attending, as someone I've dealt with patients that are in clinic, in the hospital, patients that are doing well and patients that are not. Um, this is someone that I've worked with on programmatic design, and in many ways we've been conspirators in developing things that were the best things for teaching and the best things for, for patients. 
Um, he's had a storied career as a pulmonologist. He's developed one of the region's most profound and well-recognized programs for the care of patients with cystic fibrosis, but continues to partner with in other areas and advance the knowledge and especially the training of the people that provide that care. He's been dedicated as a leader of GME, um, and he's really at his best when he's a teacher, when he emerges from the room in his yellow gown, um, and in his aw shucks, hands open wide way, wants to talk with you about the case. And it is an honor for me uh, to look back over the years that I've been blessed to, to be in its midst uh, and have this opportunity to honor uh, Worth Parker as a master clinician. I'm Kathy Kirkland, and I'm a class, a member of the Dartmouth Medical School class of 1986. So I have you beat, um, Ed, by about a decade, and it's an incredible honor to be here, especially in that I have the privilege of introducing someone who's served as an inspiration for literally generations of. Uh, people like me, especially those who have gone into infectious disease and microbiology. Uh, I was told I only have a minute, and I will keep to that, but I just want to highlight um, three things that I realized as I was reflecting on the impact that this person has had on me and my career um, that stood out for me. First is the incredible power of story to illuminate science. And I will never walk by the Hanover Inn without thinking of the Hanover matron who looked down at a tea that she was attending to see an Ascaris crawling down her leg. <laughs> Secondly, and this was a really important part of my learning that helped me both as an infectious disease physician and a parent, and I think have hel has helped many of you and probably inspired my focus on hand hygiene, and that is the understanding of the fine fecal veneer that covers the world <laughs> that I learned about from this teacher, this master teacher. And in fact, when I used to give the gastrointestinal diseases lecture for the SBM ID course, it was a series of stories about fecal veneer, which I titled, Food and Feces, a Bad but Inevitable Combination. <laughs> Finally, I think, as I look back on the impact of this teacher, was the incredible respect that he demonstrated for students, and that really informs me as I try to develop myself into a master teacher in his footsteps. The punctuality with which he began and ended every lecture, the incredible amount of preparation that he put into each lecture, rehearsing it numerous times, and yet sounding fresh and entertaining each time is an inspiration to me. And I realized, looking back on that, that those were marks of an incredible respect for the human beings that he was teaching. So it is my incredible honor to introduce Elmer Pfefferkorn as I think that's going to be pretty tough to top. <laughs> My name is Tom Finn. I'm a fifth year uh, MD MBA student graduating in less than a week now. Very exciting. Um, I'm honored to have been asked to introduce this master educator. Sorry, my notes are on my iPhone. I just have to refresh it. Um, this particular faculty member has meant a great deal to me 
and my classmates due to her undying commitment to both education and the well-being of her students. I first met her during my first year on doctoring course, and from my very first small group meeting, she managed to make each of the eight stressed first-year uh, medical students forget about the homework and studying and the stress during a one hour together as we sat captivated by her boundless knowledge and expert advice. As each of us progressed through our four years, or in my case five, at Dartmouth, she has evolved from teacher to mentor to friend. And I'm confident that the majority of students at the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth feel exactly the same way, as evidenced by her perennial receipt of teaching and mentorship awards. Through her role in internal medicine and geriatric clerkships, as well as leadership in both the Hanover, Hanover and Lebanon campuses of the Geisel School of Medicine, she has touched the lives of many Geisel students and has, of course, played no small role in many students' decision to pursue a career in internal medicine, including my own. <clears throat> it is clear to me and to my classmates that she is extremely worthy of this distinction today, and it is my hope that this honor will only help to expand her influence and mentorship of Geisel students for many years to come. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Roshni Pinto Powell. Hi, my name is Kent Powell. As a 2007 graduate of what was DMS, now Geisel, um, and a current faculty member at DHMC Lyme, uh, I am uh, honored to be asked to introduce somebody who has had a major impact in my professional career. I came to Dartmouth almost certain that I was going into emergency medicine. That is until my third year family medicine clerkship and that's where I worked with this person, not only in her role as a clerkship director, but as a mentor and a clinical preceptor. And that's where I found my passion for primary care. The lessons that I learned from her, including taking care of the whole patient and not just the disease, I carry with me and I, and I honestly use them every day in my, in my practice. I can truly say that I'm a, I'm a better clinician for having known this individual. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Kathy Pipus. Hello, uh, I'm Steve Benson, class or Dartmouth Medical School Geisel, class of 1990. It is uh, a great honor to introduce this faculty member who has had such a profound influence on me personally, as well as so many, medical, so many other medical students, house staff, fellows, and colleagues. He truly embodies the ideal of a medical scholar, teacher, and mentor. My first exposure to him was a second year medical student. The energy in his classroom, the humor, and the knowledge that he conveyed was infectious. When I am asked by my students or patients, why did you choose gastroenterology, why? I answer that for me, it was not a burning interest in gastrointestinal disorders, but rather my exposure to him and a few of his buddies during my formulative medical school years that steered me towards my life's work. Well, today, I run the SBM course in which I first encountered him, and I witness each year the same reaction, the same reception from the Geisel students of today that I had so many years ago. Each year, I review the student evaluations, and year after year, the enthusiastic and laudatory comments are the same. Year in and year out, he is our top-ranked faculty member of this undergraduate medical school course. What makes him so unique, however, is the breadth of his influence at so many different levels indeed all levels of medical education. My own experience with him reflects that. I've been fortunate enough to work with him as a medical student, as an intern, a resident, chief medical resident, fellow, GI fellow, um, and today as a faculty member, I continue to seek his advice and look on him as a lifelong mentor and role model. He has had a profound impact at each level of my training at all the critical junctures in my life. 
just as he has had for so many other students and mentees. Whether it's discussing a research project, giving career advice, explaining the pathophysiology of achalasia, or demonstrating how to take an effective history and physical exam, he's able to effectively instruct, encourage, and to cheer you along in the learning process. From the bedside, to the undergraduate classroom, to the AGA national meetings plenary lecture before 5,000 GI colleagues, he's able to teach effectively, communicate to, and to, as he likes to say, entertain his audience. But what I think really makes him so effective in so many different learning environments is the unbridled and childlike enthusiasm that he exudes. He loves what he is doing, and he loves teaching. And we all love to be around him and learn from him because of it. One day we were busily working in the, in the uh, endoscopy suite on a particularly challenging case, and there were several of us involved. And right in the middle of it, he pauses, and with a big smile on his face, he says, can you believe they pay us to do this? <laughs> <clears throat> I speak on behalf of the countless students, house staff, and colleagues that he has inspired during our medical education. We appreciate all that you have given through every facet of your life. It's been a privilege to learn from you and to work with you, and this award is so well deserved. Thank you for all you've done, Dr. Richard Rothstein. I'm Christina Megley. I'm a seventh year MD PhD student. Um, and it is my pleasure to uh, be introducing and honoring this person who has had a profound influence on my life. I first met this individual when I interviewed, and I found him behind large stacks of paper and old Remsen. He somehow inspired me to move across the United States and come to Dartmouth. And then, through my interactions with him as a first-year medical student in medical microbiology, inspired me to switch from cancer pharmacology to microbiology and join his lab. Through my tenure um, in, in this individual's lab, I have witnessed him spending tireless hours on educating students, whether it be the 42, I think I counted, people who ha he has trained in his lab, or through the lectures and the interactions that he has had with students on a daily basis. I have had the privilege of being able to work with him in the medical microbiology lab, coming full circle to where I met this individual, and saw him look over each lecture and preparation whether it was his or from others, and make sure that every year everything was up to date, spending tireless hours on the education of Dartmouth medical students and graduate students. And to put that all in perspective, this person has multiple grants, including a prestigious merit award. He is the PI of the multi-institutional $15 million Enbury grant. He has over 90 publications in prestigious peer-reviewed journals, including PNAS, Nature, and Cell. And he has been a huge inspiration to multiple students. And people from his lab have gone on to work at the NIH, the CDC, and to be faculty at medical schools across this country. Please join me in honoring Dr. Ronald Taylor. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joseph Tannenbaum, and I'm a 13 at the college, which means I just finished my junior year uh, and will be a senior next year, which is pretty scary. <laughs> um, the uh, master educator that I have been asked to introduce today, I've actually only known for about 10 weeks. Uh, we, he taught a course that I took uh, this spring. And um, at the start of the class, he mentioned uh, that no one in the class would be allowed to use their laptops. Uh, and as a member of Generation Y, this was very scary to me. Uh, I use my laptop for everything, as does everybody else in my class. Uh, but 
the, re the reason that I share that story is because this really speaks to why he is a master educator. When he, uh, when he told us we would not be allowed to use our laptops, he mentioned that anybody in our class uh, who disagreed with him could uh, pursue a research project with him about uh, the impact of uh, laptop use on student performance. And uh, <laughs> being, being the naysayer that I am, uh, I approached him after class and said, you know, I, I disagree. Uh, and I, I have to say, I, I was wrong. Um, <laughs> Uh, th through our, you know, through our research, uh, this uh, this master educator and myself have uh, he's he has spent countless hours uh, working with me and, and editing my tables and abstracts uh, ad nauseum, uh, and he has spent countless time outside of the classroom, uh, just mentoring me and giving me suggestions about uh, my future academic career, um, and so it really is uh, an honor, and I want to say thank you very much to this gentleman, uh, but it really is an honor to introduce uh, Gil Welch. Hi, I'm Jean Hamlin. I'm a fourth year student at Dartmouth. I'm honored to introduce a master educator. I have greatly appreciated his creative approach to education. He delights in posing open-ended questions that have more than one right answer. He assigns journal articles and expects students to critique the researchers' conclusions. Questioning authority is not only permitted, it's part of the curriculum. He breaks down boundaries that separate academic disciplines and includes history and art in his medical lectures. He also brings a sense of fun to learning including a Jeopardy-style endocrinology competition, complete with costumes. In addition to his work at the medical school, he teaches undergraduate courses and advises thousands of pre-medical students through the Nathan Smith Society. He's been my teacher since my first term at Dartmouth College at age 18, and I know of no other educator who has been a mentor to so many students. On behalf of all of us, Thank you, Dr. Witters.